Swagatam, a very warm welcome to this Rasa Mandap, the essence of experience, Rasa, for the Lord himself is Rasa, Raso Vai Saha. Now, I can see many of your computers or your mobiles as the case may be are connected but are you connected so once again a very warm swagat a loving welcome to this morning session where we prepare ourselves to dive into the sake grounds of all that is I guess in a way where we prepare ourselves to dive into our own sacred reality where we connect with our highest selves so welcome to Rasa Mandap with a pranam to all of you who are attending and to the organizers of the first ever conference on Hindu meditation traditions and techniques. Now, there are many of you who are connected. I can see now through your computers, your mobiles, but are you connected? as in your devices are, but are you connected in your full presence? Now, let's do one thing. Let's just turn the notifications of our mobiles off or even our computers off. Now, by notifications, Notifications, what I really mean is mobile notifications. <laughs> and mobility is in the mind maximum. This mind of ours can keep on flying in places even as we sit here in the body. So let's just turn for now all the to-do list, all the things which you need to do all that off just swipe it off and put yourself consciously on a flight mode so that the mind can take off into a reality that is your swarupa your true nature um how do we do that <laughs> So, we do that with, I guess you haven't met her, but this is Mrs. Dhyana, of course. <laughs> you can see she is one determined lady, one slip here or there and no better. <laughs> so, jokes apart, yani jokes ko chhod ke nahi, magar jokes ke saath. With a little smile on our faces, we check. Firstly, our body. Is our body present here? Are you wanting a cup of tea, something to do in the kitchen or in your bedroom? Are you lying down? If so, breathe out and make sure your body is sitting in a very determined way in front of your computer screen. Determined but relaxed. Make sure you're completely present in front of your computers. 
or your mobiles as the case may be. The second thing to check for are your emotions. With what intention are you participating in this meditation? For you get whatever you desire. If you desire just a physical benefit, just a mental relaxation, you may perhaps get it. But if you desire something deeper, like divine recognition, you have to be aware of your desire. You get what you so desire. So your bhavana, with what emotional context you are sitting for meditation, with what purity you are sitting for meditation, that a little dive into, a little checking into. Breathe out and invite yourself to step into the sacred. These are sacred grounds. And make sure your emotions are pure when you're stepping into the sacred grounds. Then, we finally look at where our mind is right now. Our body may be sitting here, but where is our mind? I may be in Delhi right now, but my mind may well be in Canada or in South Africa. Zimbabwe, <laughs> Singapore. Where is my mind right now? In the yesterday that has gone or in the tomorrow which is yet to come? The word that we use for yesterday and tomorrow is the same in Hindi. We say kal. Kal jo beet gaya, kal jo aane wala hai, kal jo is pal mein humko nahi hone deta. The yesterday that is gone, the yesterday that is yet to come. This movement in the, in the horizontal dimension is of the mind. When we gather ourselves in this present moment, whatever it be, then there is a possibility for us to levitate, to go into the vertical dimension, which is our connection with the divine. Hmm? Bring your mind, pull your mind from the two kal, the two past, future. Pull it into the present so we can take the flight the rocket in that sense, into the now and the here. For the connection with the divine is always fresh, taro taza, totally fresh. Which is why the original name for Hinduism is Sanatan, eternal. And one quality of eternal is freshness. So inviting you into that freshness, this moment, giving you a cue, use your outgoing breath as if, let's put it this way, ah, oh, you're sighing. It's a sigh of relief. There is a science behind this because as we let our breath out and let go of the breath deeply, the heart rate decreases. It slows down. It becomes more rhythmic. And one particular nerve in the body, which incidentally is called the, let's see if I can pull that for you, which is called the vagus nerve which goes all the way from the back of our brainstem down our abdomen 
that particular nerve begins to relax and we begin to become more grounded in a sense of well-being and wholeness so use your breath to pull yourselves into this now also because we have precious let's see some 50 minutes with you you have invested your time into this precious time each breath is life and we know life is uncertain so as i always say we take your lifetime investment very sincerely do you take it sincerely as well <laughs> so in the spirit of sincerity let me just quickly tell you the weave which we have for you the meditation weave is for the next 50 odd minutes after which we will step into a little bit of tuning exactly what we were doing with our breath which relaxes our bio neurology just relaxation of our nerves let me put it this way and embodiment exercise then we'll be moving into this really beautiful meditation inspired by mundaka upanishad on the twin birds many of you uh, i'm sure we have some uh, extremely distinguished participants in this you would have heard of this beautiful shloka uh, the imagery which the rishis have so poetically carved um, i'll be using that imagery in the digital medium in a modern way to invite us to step into this sutra from the upanishads they will be of course after that the practice of the twin bird meditation my desire is to do this practice in two stages to guide you first into an understanding experiential understanding of the shloka and uh, firstly secondly uh, to create an experience for you where you can take the shloka into an anubhav when the cyclones of life hit you which they will because that is the nature of life So let's see if we can do the latter part but that is my desire let's see how it goes So getting ready now to step into the sacred temple of our ancestors Tayari kar rahe hain to step into the sacred temple requesting you to please close your eyes and listen the sound of bells the sound of shankh let that purify your ears let that drive away all the clutter all that negativity which is surrounding or in your mind that pulls you down purify this
breathing deep. Shanti Pat from Mundaka Upnishad. You can fold your hands and pray along. अथ मुंडकोपनिषत शांति मंत्र हरि ओ भद्रम करणे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्ये मक्षभिजा स्थिरंगेस्तुवागुंसस्तनूशेम देवितयदा स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति न स्ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशा ओम शांति 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 ब्रिंगिंग योर सेल्फ्स क्लोजर टू द ग्राउंड्स ऑफ द सेक्रेट योर ओन सेक्रेट reality breathing out and allowing your body to be completely relaxed you're going to the temple the divine temple that our ancestors have created for us you can't possibly step into this temple with tension on your forehead your faces what is the face that you're going to show to the lord <laughs> it can't possibly with a grumpy look you have to have the best face possible to show to the lord a face with a smile what we heard right now was invocations by our rishis for the eyes to see auspicious for the ears to hear auspicious 
for the senses to stay stable as we worship and for our lifespan to be as long as the divine so desires. This auspiciousness of the senses we practiced yesterday invoking the divinity of the senses when the senses are resting. As we walk into this temple, let me gently whisper a disclaimer, a very gentle disclaimer in your ears. These meditation sessions are simply tasters of the divine rasa. For this one hour you may feel great, but unless you are practicing, not just every day, but every moment of your life, this purification of senses, connecting with their divine innocence, this is not going to work. If we do a meditation and revert back to abusing our senses, especially in this post-digital, hyper-consumption-driven metaverse, where every second there is a new stimulation, a new desire, a new jealousy, a new competition, a new pain that oftentimes we can do nothing about. Practice, persistent practice is sadhana. And integrating this anubhav of meditation into our everyday living is swadhyaya, self-study. Textual, but also what makes my little self little insignificant and what helps me realize that my little self is actually not little it's infinite it's eternal that is swa dhyaya swadhyaya self study not just going into this temple of our ancestors and thinking of the jutas, the shoes that you've left outside. <laughs> when you step in this temple, you step in totally. The total responsibility for this is ours. And the total freedom for this is also given to us. The choice remains ours. So, the divinity of the senses when they are resting, important, eyes auspicious, they see auspicious, ears, they hear auspicious, senses are stable, not distracted by so much which is going on in the world. Then the mind can rest. And saubhakyam, blessedness can come. Invoking another mystic from our land, who incidentally, his lot of practices, his lot of dohas are inspired by the tantras. Sant Kabir Das from Banaras. He illustrates this introversion of senses beautifully. He says, Neno ki kar kothri, putli palang bichhai, palko ki chik dar ke, piko diya rijhai. Of my eyes, I make a room. The eyeball, the put putli, is like the cot. I lay the cot. The eyes are the room, the eyeball is the cot. The eyelids are the chick, 
the curtain i put the chicks down i put the curtain down and inside i seduced the lord rijhai to please the lord to seduce the lord now you'll find a word in the shlok from upanishads that links to rijhana swami dayanand uses this word and he says jushtam jushtam means sought after the beloved lord is sought after and yearned for pico dia rijhai <laughs> so the beloved has to be pleased now to be able to please the lord we need to connect first with this sense this body so i invite you put a hand on your heart and breathe out making sure you're breathing out from the mouth and there's a little sound whispering sound coming out let that breath go to its very end and then breathe in going out let the breath complete now breathe in the sound is also very important because the vocalization is something which relaxes your what is called the autonomic nervous system and when your system which works at an unconscious level is relaxed your entire body mind sense complex relaxes physiologically So let's just try that before we take a dive into the spirit the physiology needs to be relaxed try it drop the shyness if you're feeling shy there's no one seeing you i'm the one who is the <laughs> the one who is being looked at so don't feel shy i should be feeling shy <laughs> don't feel shy and if you do then smile because devi is also lajja roop even lajja is a form of the divine goddess ya devi sarvabhuteshu lajja roopena samsthita so she is also shyness smile at that shyness and say namaste to her give yourself a chance mauka de i sincerely mean it life is precious and uncertain don't miss this opportunity it's a gift for you use it no matter how big you are no matter how knowledgeable you are this is still a chance to allow yourself to come into the space of the one who is knowledge himself who is position power aishwarya himself ishvara allow allow and only you can do it no one can make you do it allow
throughout the meditation, remember, any time you catch yourself feeling the least bit tense or a least bit confused or a least bit, let's say, thinking about what is right and what's wrong, suspend the judgment by breathing out. Later, you can turn your judgments, notifications, what have you on. But right now, for just this little time, give yourself a chance. I truly mean it. As I can sense it, now we are ready to step into the inner temple. We don't know who they were, but we can guess what we are going to listen to are the blessings of our rishis who have given us using metaphors, using poetry, some of the deepest practical methodologies that we can apply in our life on an everyday basis, no matter what we are doing, no matter where we are, no matter how modern we are, whether we are flying on jet planes or we are moving around in bullock carts, doesn't matter. These are Sanatan Sutras, eternal methodologies. They will work with, with you, for you. As long as you can purify your senses and be present with a devotional attitude, with an attitude of openness, perhaps like little children ready to receive the blessings of your own ancestors in this day, in this age. getting ready to step into the sacred interior of the temple. Listen. Dva suparna sayuja sakhaya samanam vruksham parishasvajate tayoranya pippalam svadvatti Anashnananyo bhichakashiti Samane vrukshe purusho ni magno ni shaya sho chati mushya manaha Jushtam yada pashyatyanyamisha masya Mahimanamitivita shokaha Dva suparna sayuja sakhaya Samanam vruksham parishasvajate Tayoranya pippalam svadvatti Anashnananyo bhichakashiti Samane vrukshe purusho ni magno ni shaya sho chati mushya manaha Jushtam yada pashyatyanyamisha masya Mahimanamitivita shokaha Dva suparna sayuja sakhaya Samanam vruksham parishasvajate Tayoranya pippalam svadvatti Anashnananyo bhichakashiti Samane vrukshe purusho ni magno ni shaya sho chati mushya manaha Jushtam yada pashyatyanyamisha masya 
महिमानमिति वीत शोक सुपर्ण सयुजा सखाया सामन वृक्ष परिशस्व जाते तयोरन्य पिपल स्वाद्भक्ति अनश्नो भिचाकशीती सामने वृक्षे पुषो निमग्नो नीशया शोचति मुह्यम जुष्ट यदा पश्यन्यमीशम से महिमानी वीत शोक सुपर्ण सयुजा सखाया Two beautiful birds, closely bound in friendship, cling to the same tree. One eats the sweet fruit with relish; the other, eating not, watches. seated on the same tree immersed in the body bewildered for he is not the lord and has sorrow one bird grieves but when he sees the other the beloved lord in all his greatness then his sorrow passes away from him imagine this river of life flowing dekhe imagine using your bhavana creative contemplation to move into this meditative understanding of the shloka a river of life 
flows in this forest of samsara by the river there is a tree on the tree there are two birds on a branch one little bird and one let's call it the bigger bird both of them are dear friends being by this river of life as she flows on a huge tree by this river one bird eats the fruit of this tree sweet and sometimes not so sweet bitter sour this river of life this vriksh the body this fruit experiences born out of our karma some experiences sweet success love beauty joy sweet experiences other experiences painful losing death illness loneliness one bird the little bird tasting the experiences of life that this tree has to offer sometimes this little bird feels like she owns the world she can fly sometimes it gets so dark and so lonely that she feels like she could just die sometimes life gifts her fruits of success 
of recognition, of respect. Other times, life offers hatred, judgments, anger, misunderstandings, bitterness. Each day, this little bird experiences life in all its rasas, tastes, living by this river of eternal life. We all are like this little bird experiencing our own tastes sometimes of love of belonging other times of loneliness misunderstandings hatred this fruit coming from our own journeys, our own karmas, not as a reprimand, but as a lesson for us to, yes, see the big bird, our twin bird who is living just with us. Sudaya Sakaya The one which is our own Sakha Deep friend and companion The big bird who is always with us whether we are Awake, whether we are asleep, dreaming, Sakha Bhav, this big bird who is our eternal companion, our friend, our beloved. our own eternal nature. She does not eat this fruit with love. She just watches us eating Hating, loving, feeling good, feeling bad. Sometimes dancing with joy, other times crying in deep bitterness and sorrow. She simply watches lovingly her little friend. Mm -hmm. 
समाने वृक्षे पुरुषाहा निमग्ना अनीशया शोचती मोहयमाना दिस लिटिल बर्ड आइडेंटिफाइड विथ द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ द बॉडी द माइंड द सेंसेस who does not know her divine nature is full of sorrow deluded like us bewildered mohyamana till one day jushtam yada pashyati we look at the one who is sought after the beloved his mahima the big bird the greatness of the big bird who is by our side always when the spotlight changes from the small bird to the big bird iti वीत शो कहा द सॉरो पासिस सिंपली डिजॉल्व्स वॉच दैट ट्री यू एज यू नो योर सेल्फ नेम form position personality inclinations all your ego identifiers as the little bird this identification through the body the mind the senses creates shoka sorrow because pleasure and pain go together we taste the rasas pleasure and pain identified with the small bird but when in a moment of grace that fruit drops and our focus shifts from our small ego selves to our infinite sanatan selves where we are ishvara herself himself then all the sorrow dissolves
सुखवा सुपर्णा सयुजा सखाया समानम वृक्षम परिशस्व जाते तयोरन्या पिपलम स्वादवत्ति अनश्नन्यो अभिचाक शीति समाने वृक्षे पुरुषा निमग्न अनीशया शोचती मुह्यम जुष्ट यदा पश्यति अन्यमीशम अस्य महिमानम इति वीत शुक In life, whenever challenges surround you, do remember this art of shifting the spotlight from the little bird to the big bird. because always no matter how alone you feel no matter how broken you feel no matter how misunderstood you feel your eternal bird is always with you always Sayuja Sakhaya your eternal friend I hope some of you remember to use this in your life every day as you see the chaos in the world as you experience the cacophony in communication as you experience intense loneliness in the world so connected yet so apart remember your sakha whose mahima is what is creating this leela whose mahima is what is making you learn grow mature via this leela of different experiences sweet not so sweet bitter terribly bitter all his mahima the divine grace to make us mature to make us learn to make us grow
slowly breathe out, open your eyes and be ready to experiment. Test this in your everyday life. That is why Hindu Dharma is called Sanatan, Eternal. Aap sabko pranam prem. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you very much, uh, Akanksha Joshi ji. Your entire uh, practice was centered on Dwa Suparna Sayuja Sakhaya. That was the central theme, which was from Mundako Upanishad. I can res I can respond only from another mantra from Mundako Upanishad. Bhidyate Hridaya Granthihi, Chidyante Sarvasamshayaha, Chiyante Chasya Karmani, Tasmin Drishte Paravare. Uh -huh. All the knots of the heart are pierced and all doubts have been cut asunder and all actions have diminished when we have glimpses of the true divine being. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to have the glimpses of our inner pure consciousness, the big bird, as you mentioned. Thank you very much. Immense <laughs> gratitude. Thank you, Jai Ramanji. Thank you. Thank you. Very grateful for all of you, you, Hari, for giving this opportunity for uh, this. Truly, deeply grateful. And thank you all who are attending this for participating. Can't see you, but certainly can sense you. <laughs>